Hey y'all, let's take a look at factors and coefficients. A coefficient basically is something that goes along with the other parts of a term. We'll talk about terms in a second. If you have 3AB, for example, that means, we know that means 3 times A times B. If there's nothing between 3 and the A, nothing between the A and the B, like a plus sign or a minus sign, we know we're multiplying, right? So we would say 3 is the coefficient of A and B. A is the coefficient of 3 and B. B is the coefficient of 3 and A and so on. Okay, just like right down the line. A coefficient generally in algebra refers to numbers. In other words, if you have this term right here, 12xyz. We know that means 12 times x times y times z. Generally, this is referred to as the coefficient. It's the number term. This negative 7a, the negative 7 is the coefficient. 5q is the, 5 is the coefficient of the term 5q. All right. A term, you, if you want to write this down, go ahead and write this down. Or you can visualize this and just make sure you know what a term is because we'll be using the term term a lot this year. Okay, here is a term. It's a single variable or a constant. In other words, a single variable is x, or a constant could be, I don't know, negative 3. Either one of those is a term. It could be a product or a quotient of variables and constants. In other words, it could be, I don't know, negative 3x, or it could be, you know, 7 uh, divided by 2, or it could be a divided by 11, something like that. That's a term. It could be a product or a quotient of expressions with variables and or constants. We'll talk about that in just a second. It's just basically another way to say term is just a single algebraic item. It's a thing. All right. Terms get added and subtracted. And you'll know, you'll be able to look at a, an expression and tell how many terms there are. So let's take a look at those. All right. A 10 is a term. All right, z is a term. 10 times z is a term. All right, even something complicated like that. Negative 3ab times y plus 2 in parentheses over c. It's still one thing, all right, being multiplied or divided. Okay, now look at this expression. Looks very complicated. Don't let that throw you. We're not going to do anything with this except for tell how many terms are in the expression. Well, here's a term, 5z. Here's another term, negative 8xy. Here's another term, positive 11p over 8 plus 6. Here's another term, negative 47, four terms, all right? Generally, you can look at <clears throat> the number of pluses and minuses between terms, between, between you know, items and tell, okay, there's a minus, there's a plus, there's a minus. There's three of them, so we need one more. There'll be four terms. Now, this plus here is a part of this single term, so they don't exactly count that, okay? All right, let's look at the distributive property. This is very important that you know this in algebra because you'll be using this quite a lot. And uh, let's go forth uh, first and prove that, uh, you know, half of algebra, is, it seems like it's just something that they go with real numbers. We do it and it works. Oh, we did it with other numbers and it works again. We do it with these numbers and it works again. Hey, can you find anything that th this doesn't work with? No, nope, I can't either. I can't either. I can't either. Okay, well, well, we'll call this just an algebraic, you know, principle, and we'll just say we can use it with x's and y's and eights. So let's do this first. Uh, first off, 9 times 6 minus 4. Well, we know 9 times, that's 6 minus 4 is 2, correct? All right, so the answer, 9 times 2 is 18. Now here's what else is weird. <clears throat> if you did the 9 and you multiplied it by the 6 itself, you would get 54. Then if you multiply the 9 by the negative 4, 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. Well, 54 minus 36 does happen to be 18. All right, let's look at this one. Uh, 2 minus 7 is what? <coughs> negative 5, right? Negative 3 times negative 5, and the answer to that is 15. We know that, okay? Well, let's do one of these at a time. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, correct? Okay, negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21, and I'll be doggone negative 6 plus 21 does happen to be 15. Do we even need to do the third one to prove it? Okay. So basically what we're saying here is if you do this all together in one lump and multiply it, you get an answer. But if you were to do this individually and individually and then add everything together, you would get exactly the same thing. The point is this.
this is the distributive property. If you want to write this down, I would definitely, you know, do that in my notes. And in other words, keep doing your notebook like this, and you should be writing, you know, 17 right there so you can look back and do problems that you might have forgotten how to do. That's the distributive property. Any real numbers, that's all we're messing with this year is real numbers. A, B, and C, if you multiply A, then in parentheses, B plus C, you will distribute to A. First, you'll distribute it to the B and get A times B. Then you'll distribute it to the C and get A times C right here. Boom. All right. Now let's do a couple of these examples. Real simple ones. <clears throat> let's check this out. First off, what's the answer to this first one? 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. The answer we know is 0. But let's prove that this works using the distributive property. Well, 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 4 times positive 5 is positive 20. And 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. All right. Well, we have 24 minus 12. That's 12. 12 plus 20 is 32. Minus 32 is 0. There we go. All right, let's try this one. 8 times, in parentheses, x plus y plus z. We're just going to apply the a individually to each one of those terms. There are three terms in the parentheses, the x, the y, and the z. We're going to apply each one by multiplying. 8 times x is just 8x. Done. 8 times positive y is ay. Done. You don't have to do that. I'm just crossing out just to show you. And then 8 times positive z is az. And there we go. That is our distribution of the A. Let's try this one. And obviously you can pause and copy any time. Well, let's do the X times the R, and that is going to be XR. Done. X times 2S. We'll put the 2 in front and say XS. You should never eat... That's a terrible joke, isn't it? x times negative t, well, a positive x times a negative will be a negative, and then let's be writing x, t right there, okay? That's all you do. That's all. No, we don't solve this. We don't try to put a number value to it. We're just practicing the basics. These are drills like you do in a sport uh, like soccer or football or contact chess. All right, let's try putting the j, a, and let's distribute that all the way across there. Go ahead and do it and see what you get. Pause it. <clears throat> All right, I'm assuming you paused it. When we uh, multiply JA times M, we get JAM. All right, we multiply JA times R, we get JAR. And we get JA times CK, we get J. A, C, K. What a coincidence. Okay. And there we go. That's all we do to that. There's nothing else we need to do. We're finished. We've distributed the uh, J, A to all those terms. All right. If you want to go ahead and pause and copy and try this out and see what you get for yourself. Give it a whirl. All right. Well, I'm just going to say the answer first. 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. So 6 times 0, the answer is 0. Right, let's just prove it by using the distributive property. 6 times 8 is 48. Done. 6 times negative 4, negative 24. Done. 6 times 1, 6. Done. 6 times negative 5, negative 30. All right. 48 minus 24 is 24. Plus 6 is 30. Minus 30 is, look at there, we proved it works. Okay. Since it works for numbers, it works for variables as well. All right, pause and copy. Give this a shot, and uh, when you're finished, unpause it. A, B is what we're, we're distributing, so let's go ahead and do that to each one of these terms. There are one, two, three terms inside this parentheses. So the first term you're going to get is A, B times Y. The second term you're going to get is A, B times G. The third term you're going to get is A, B times 5, Z. We'll put the coefficient 5 first then do ABZ. 
And by the way, if in the back of your book you ever have A, B, Z, and they have, I don't know, A, Z, B, or Z, B, A, or Z, A, B, that's fine. A times B times Z is the same as Z times B times A. When you multiply numbers, 3 times 4, or 4 times 3, it doesn't matter what order you put those in. Remember. Okay? Pause and copy again. All right, and go ahead and solve. Now let's we'll, let's start this out together. I hate to see this thing. I don't know something about that irritates me. Um, the y and the z at the end. I'm just going to move it up here to the beginning. Remember, it doesn't matter what order we put these in. I'm just going to move it. All right. So y z times f, y z f. Y z times negative h. Well, we have a positive times a negative. That's going to be negative y z h. And then y, z times c, d is y, z, c, d. Done. We've distributed the y and z. All right. This is a little more interesting. You can pause and copy again. And uh, we're going to, you know, we have a uh, term that has a coefficient and a variable, and then one that just has just a coefficient. But we're still going to treat this exactly the same. Don't do anything different. If something works, use it. You know, it'll work. So we have first negative 10 times 5d. Well, we know this is going to be a negative, right? A negative times a positive is a, is a negative. Negative 10 times 5 is negative 50. We're just going to slap the d right on the end. We're done. All right, now we have negative 10 times negative 7. That'll give us a positive 70. Boom, we're done with that one too. Okay, all right, you have 6. Try a and b together. <coughs> Excuse me, and then you know, go ahead and pause it and try a and b and come back when you're finished with a and b. All right, they're asking you to add first and then times. Okay, so in other words, you're going to go like this. This is your at 5 minus 3 is 2, so 4 times 2 is 8 piece of cake. We're just going to prove that this distribution works by multiplying this first. We know the answer is 8, all right? So we're going to take the 4 and distribute it to the 5. 4 times 5 is 20, done. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And 20 minus 12 is, of course, the same thing we've done before, just to prove that it works. All right, let's try C. Pause it and try C and come back. Oh, okay, well, we kind of already did C. That's the distributive property. Let's go ahead and do D. Pause, talk, pause D and come back with it. Okay, I'm assuming you've paused. I'm just going to prove that this works. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 minus 7 is 2, so the answer is going to be 4 times 2, or 8. Let's put this over here. But we can go ahead and distribute the 4 times the 6 would be 24. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 4 times 5 is 20. And 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. There we go. All right. Well, let's try it. 24 minus 8 is 16. 16 plus 20 is 36. And 36 minus 28 is, look at there, 8. So we just proved that it works. Pause it and try E. All right. Well, let's go ahead and just do one at a time. 2m times xy is 2mxy. 2m times negative 3p, well, a positive times a negative is a negative, so it's a negative. 2 times 3 is 6, and then m times p, just put m and a p. We're done. That's all you need to do. Pause it and try F. All right. Well, we're just going to do one at a time. XY times A is just XY A. XY times positive B, positive XY B. XY times negative 2C, well, again, a positive times a negative is a negative. And we have a 2 there. Let's just put that out front, the coefficient. Then XY times C, XY C, and that's it. Nothing to solve. These are just drills. You want to get quick at and accurate at, and it'll help. this will help you a lot solving equations later on. Yet again, the Saxon method is get these drills down first so you're good at them, you understand them, you're faster at them, then later on we'll use them for other stuff. So anyway, okay, you guys have a great day. I will see you next time.